Although we're embarking on season two, so before getting involved in, in Nightfall, exactly what did you know about Knights Templar? Uh, like many people, I'd heard of them. I was aware of them through certain uh, plays and films and shows, but they'd always been dealt with as uh, a kind of um, a minor side story or as you know, a, a kind of very two-dimensional two um, aspect to, uh, uh, to a story. Uh, so this was the first time, I think, it's the first time that they've really been dealt with as the subject in their own right for a whole series or a whole movie, uh, which I found really exciting. Uh, I didn't know too much about them. You know, I knew that they were involved in the early Crusades. I knew that they were warrior monks. Um, but that was about it. And when I started to read about them and the way that they lived, uh, the rules that they lived by, uh, uh, their, their history, which was over about 200 years, their incredible rise from nine men um, sworn to pov poverty in Jerusalem, uh, protecting pilgrims on the road to, uh, for pilgrims on the road to the Holy Land, uh, to the most powerful military and banking organization the world's have seen uh, within a uh, hundred years. Uh, it's an incredible story, an incredible rise and an incredible fall. So uh, it was really wonderful for me. I'm a bit of a nerd with history anyway, so when I get a role like this, it's, it's uh, a bonus for me to research. And this was so fertile that yeah. I loved it. I mean, how much research does it take? Because like you said, it's not really been covered before, or say, mm. on film and TV. So how much research do you... Is there, like, specialist areas that you have to go to? Or, like, something like the British Library, maybe? Uh, well, we were lucky. We had a fantastic uh, uh, consultant historian on the show, Dan Jones, who's written a book on the Templars, uh, on their formation and their history and their downfall, um, expelling the myths and uh, exposing as much of the truth as possible. Uh, so I didn't have to go to the British Library much as I would have enjoyed that. Um, there, are, there are several, several uh, very good books on uh, the, the Knights Templar, the, the poor souls of Jerusalem, the, the poor sold, fellow soldiers of Christ. Um, so I just delved into those books. Some were quite heavy and academic. Uh, Dan's is academic but extremely readable and uh, reads like a fantastic thriller. Uh, so, you know, I just had a lot of source material. My character, Tancred de Hauteville, although um, a fabricated character, was a real uh, man, but in a, uh, about 150 years before our story uh, is set. He wasn't a Templar, but he was a knight. He was a noble. Uh, and so my name is taken from that. Uh, actually, the real Tancred de Oudville in an early crusade protected uh, Saracen prisoners. Uh, so he, he was an honorable man in that sense. He put up a flag and said, these prisoners are under my protection because it was a, a terrible bloodbath, of course, and there was a lot of slaughter uh, on both sides. But um, I like those little nuggets of anecdote and information that you take and build into a character you're, you know, creating. So Tancred's uh, loyalty and nobility uh, were kind of anchor points for me of his character. Yeah, I, I was actually going to say, um, the, because uh, Tancred is so loyal to the Order and to Landry, his friend as well, yeah. I mean, is there any point during this new season that their friendship is going to be tested at all? I guess it's tested, but, you know, Landry has a great fall from grace. Uh, he has his Templar status, his leadership stripped from him. Um, Tancred stands by him, not because he's, like, uh, in awe of him and has, has no judgment about him. He does. But I was talking about, you know, when you read anecdotes of military men um, and women, um, and you realize that when they talk about when they, when the, why do they risk their lives? Why do they fight? And all these metaphysical ideas of country and flag, they're all, they're all well and good, but when it boils down to it, most of these people will say they're fighting for their brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. They're fighting for the people next to them. Yeah. They're not fighting for this esoteric thing, this 
construct. Mm -hmm. You know, they're fighting for the people around them. And so that's a very hard bond to break, you know. Yeah. And so that's what I figure is between Tancred and Landry mm -hmm. and why he knows he's flawed and he knows he's screwed up, but he stands by him as a brother. So it's kind of, it's, it's good for us, it's very powerful. I mean, I give it to him in the first episode. I, I tell him what I think and what he should do. But it's a great scene with him and his child who he's insisting I, he has to give up because he thinks he's toxic. Yeah. And he's, uh, Tancred's the only man he trusts to protect the baby, to take it somewhere. And that opens up another storyline for me, a character from my past, a woman I loved, and was courting before I became a Templar, she became a nun. But it gives me, she's the only person I trust to look after this baby, and uh, it, it gives me an opportunity to go and see her again, <laughs> which opens another. Not and that I'm intending to break my vows, yeah. I'm not intending that, but he's curious, yeah. you know, so <laughs> it opens up another storyline for me. I was actually going to, again, you, you're leading right into my I'm questions. Who's interviewing right, who? Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, th th of course, you're going to have your own path as well this season. And I've seen the first couple of episodes, and yeah. I, I was going to mention that friendship between the nun and yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you see somebody who you've loved, who you've been in love with, and there's years between, even if that relationship's changed, there's a part of your heart that's always locked into it. And so the way I figure it with me and Anne is, uh, you know, he's, he's a loyal Templar. He's, to he's loyal to his vows. The brotherhood is everything to Tancred. But I think when he sees her, you can't control that part of your heart or your brain that reacts to seeing someone you've been in love with, that you loved. And so, you know, he holds back. He doesn't break his vows. Uh, first, There's no temptation maybe. there I'm at all. Not going to give anything away. <laughs> Not going to give anything away, but uh, obviously uh, a door that he's kept locked is opened again, and it changes him. I won't say how far it changes him, but uh, it was a lovely thing to play, and Claire Cooper's fantastic as Sister Anne. Um, and that's what you want with a partner in a storyline like that. You want somebody who's playful, and you... You, you, it's all about the eyes. It's not about so much physically what you do, but it's about the, 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 the feeling that you build together on screen between two characters who are meant to have those feelings for each other. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, she was a great partner in that. Okay. So, okay, so have we got some new faces as well this season? Yes. And you, you probably know who I'm going to mention. <laughs> yes. So, yes, you um, have Mark Carroll. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. But he's a completely uh, different character than what people are probably going to expect. Because I was quite surprised that. Totally. He how goes through a complete <laughs> transformation. I mean, um, yeah. It was what a, what a fantastic buzz and addition to the cast. We got a lot of new young guys as well. And of course, it was great for them because they were doing most of the work with, with Mark. And, you know, but he's a very open, sweet guy. And he was a fan of the first season. He'd been sent when when they were, you know, approaching Mark about it. Obviously, sent him the whole first season. He loved it. He said it's really th that's my thing. I love that subject. And you know, at the first table read through, you know, he's using this really great English voice. Yes. And uh, he said, yeah, I just want to say thank you for inviting me, guys. I just I love this show. And just tell me how to do it, you know, and he was like very humble and very, very lovely. And of course, um, physically, his transformation with the wonderful makeup department uh, and prosthetics, you know, they changed his appearance completely. And the idea is he's this grizzled Templar drill sergeant, veteran, gruff and brutal, apparently. But, you know, he's got a, a warm center. Yeah. That, that grows and becomes more apparent through the season. But he, you know, he starts off ostensibly as <coughs> Landry's nemesis. He's like down on Landry from the beginning, saying this man shouldn't be allowed back into the order. And Landry comes back as an initiate. So, you know, for me, the, the season one, we were like, 
the band of brothers, but now I'm a Templar Knight. He's not a Templar anymore at the beginning of the season. He's an initiate. So he's being, he's, he starts his training all over again with the young lads. And the, we've got loads of new la young lads in the show who are fantastic, some great female characters as well. And it's so necessary to add those other strings to the, you know, to the instrument. Um, but it's a, it, it, you know, it, it goes in a, real, a really different direction this season, a lot darker, a lot grittier. Um, it has uh, uh, a wonderful, you know, drive to it. And, uh, you know, the, the, the female characters add a fantastic balancer, but they are, they're no pushover. You know, they're not uh, light and airy doing lots of um, <laughs> embroidery in the corner. There's some embroidery that goes on, I think. But um, no, they're great, they're great. It's great to have them on board, yeah. And obviously, with, um, if history has anything to tell us about the brutality of humans <laughs> in, in, the, in that kind of that yeah. era, I mean, obviously, there's going to be. It was the first season was brutal. How much more of that can we expect? This is going to get worse. Everything is ramped up. The 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 fighting, the battles, the horror, the torture. You know, but when you're dealing with a subject like this, you'd be doing a disservice to hold back. It doesn't mean that you need to show constant gore, but when you read about the reality and you know what these people's lives were like and what they faced and what happened. Uh, I think you have a certain duty if you're saying, well, this is our story, this is the story we're telling, this is part of it. And uh, I, I don't think you can do it without that, really. So it's not for the faint-hearted, but it's grounded. It's, n it's never gratuitous, you know, and it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking what really happened, and uh, a lot of what happened is shown, <laughs> yeah. So the battle scene's quite uh, brutal for you. Are they quite hard going? Yeah, well, everything's ramped up. We're doing tons more than we did in season one. So, you know, usually the, f the extraordinary stunt team, they're our, they're our trainers, they're our guys, they're our choreographers. They're there to train us and make us look good and as convincing as we can be. And we do nearly all our own stuff, but of course, they're our masters. Yeah. So we watch them and we mimic them and they, they show us how to do it well. Um, and our abilities grow and our confidence grows and eventually we convince ourselves, so hopefully the audience as well. But there was so much uh, less time this season to have separate sessions set aside to learn these fights. I had one s uh, sequence that was 30 moves. Now that might s not sound a lot, but when you're fighting four guys, mm -hmm. 30 moves are it's a lot, it's a long sequence, and we didn't have time, so you're rehearsing it in bed, and you're going. <laughs> and you're doing all that, and then it comes to the day, and the adrenaline takes over, um, but you get through it. We had a couple of injuries, but nothing serious. You know, um, those guys are as hard as nails, so whatever happens to them, they get up. I mean, their job is to look after us as well. You know, we were... Uh, relatively unscathed. We took a couple of knocks, but it's fine. Um, but there's a lot more of that to look forward to. So you've got the story and the character, but you've also got this uh, fantastic action. We loved it. We, you know, we loved riding, and it's such a thrill. Yeah. You know, and those horses are so beautiful. They're, and you form a bond with the horse, and you just <laughs> give it a kiss, and he <laughs> goes. <laughs> And you're galloping <laughs> through a wood, and it's like you, you, it's hard not to just shriek with laughter for the joy of it. Right. So we're very lucky. Okay. <laughs> and finally, you're in four episodes of Good Omens, aren't you? Is it four? I'm in four episodes of Good is Omens, or is it five? Four? Five? Oh. Four, five. <laughs> yeah, it's a six part uh, uh, series, yes. And I was at the premiere last night, which I might seven. have some dark circles so under my eyes. Friday, yes. Yeah. It does, and that was brilliant. Uh, Douglas McKinnon, who was uh, one of the main directors on season one of Nightfall, um, you know, said, uh, I want you to, you know, audition for this part in this new Neil Gaiman uh, show. And he's a sweet, completely different character for me. I mean, I'm usually on a horse swinging a sword or as a Roman <laughs> commander, you know, or, or some kind of antagonist, an alien hybrid, uh, angel-human <laughs> hybrid. 
in Dominion. Uh, so this guy, he said, yeah, now, it's going to seem like it's a nothing rock, but it isn't. He said, he's the international delivery man. And I went, okay. He said, yeah, read all the scripts. So, of course, I did anyway. And some of the best scripts I've read in my life. I mean, I was laughing my head off and just so inspired by the writing, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. And uh, this guy, Leslie, um, is an international delivery man who delivers to the four horsemen of the apocalypse um, to bring about Armageddon. Uh, he doesn't realise that when he's doing it, he's just doing his job, you know, and he's got a wife and he's got a home life. So it's this wonderful little cameo who just appears throughout the series at these, uh, you know, uh, these, these uh, essential moments. Um, so it's brilliant working with Michael Sheen and, you know, David Tennant. Uh, so much talent on the job, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like, it's easier to say everyone's in it than list people because uh, so yeah I, I, I was lucky enough to uh, be involved in that as well yeah looking forward to that one as well great <laughs> All right thank you very much for your time today thank you ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey you guys, is that yeah. from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey, hey.